members of the Sussex squad. I'm tired. I'm really, really tired. I am tired, tired, tired. Why am I tired? I'm tired of seeing this beautiful, remarkable woman, Megan, Duchess of Sussex, every single day being slandered. I'm tired every single day of watching her getting defamed. I'm watching, I'm tired of every single day watching Megan get abused, lied on by UK tabloids, lied on by the BBC every single day for profit so they can make a quick buck of, of inciting hate towards this beautiful, remarkable woman, Megan, Duchess of Sussex. I am sick and I am tired of watching it keep on happening. Now, recently, BBC claimed that Megan had misled the court and Megan filed a complaint with the BBC over the claim that she misled the court in her privacy and copyright case that Megan won. Before I go forward with this podcast, my name is Brian and welcome back to Sussex Squad Family TV on YouTube. Kindly hit that like and subscribe button for daily and consistent content. Keyword daily and consistent. Now, Megan filed a complaint to BBC of a claim she misled the court in a privacy and copyright case against the Daily Fail. First of all, Megan won her case against the Daily Fail. Megan, at no point in the trial was Megan ever, ever, not one moment was Megan ever on trial. Even though that is what UK tabloids would like its readers to believe, not a single moment was Megan ever on trial. The person that committed illegal behaviors towards Megan, that is of Sussex, by publishing extracts of her letter she wrote to Thomas Markle, was the Daily Fail, not Megan. Megan was never ever on trial, not once or ever. It was the daily fail. And what happened during this court trial? In this court trial, Megan Marco won. Megan won the case against the daily fail owned by Roth Mayer. And I'm sick and tired of this. UK media protection racket for each other's criminal behavior so that they can continue their criminal behavior towards others. Let's not forget, this is the same BBC that created a show depicting a cartoon show full of puppets depicting Megan threatening to knife K. Milton. Yes, the BBC did that. This is the same BBC in which Danny Baker held racial abuse towards Archie, Prince Harry and Meghan's son, who was then later rehired by the BBC after making a racist comment towards Archie. So when someone tells you what racism, there are many, many instances and examples of racism i could create an entire video depicting every instance megan experienced racism up to now and still i don't think it will fit an entire one hour video it's more than it because the story keeps on happening time and time again i'll have to make Hundreds of videos depicting the racism that Megan has experienced because it's 
a large, large number. The BBC called that show satire of depicting a black mixed-race woman, Meghan Markle, threatening to knife the white Kate Milton. If you are wondering how Camilla Tomini is a liar ever came up with the story of how the future white queen of the UK cried, was made to cry by the mixed race woman, Megan Duchess of Sussex. If you ever wondered how Camilla Tomini is a liar ever came up with that lie, you simply need to look at the examples, the likes of the BBC set, the standards they say they set when writing articles or even making shows about Megan that is of Sussex. It is appalling, appalling to see what Megan has had to experience at the hands of UK tabloids, at the hands of the BBC. All of them functioning and working together hand in hand to promote the illegal behaviors of the likes of the Daily Fail and UK tabloids to continue their illegal behaviors owned by Rupert Murdoch and Rothmere. And this needs to stop. It needs to stop. I'm sick and tired of having to watch this every single time. I'm so sick of it. Now, Megan, that is of Sussex, even had to complain to the BBC about Amol Rajan's reporting on her legal victory over the mail on Sunday. Megan was never on trial. The Daily Fail was on trial. What I'm not seeing is UK tabloids, the carnival of so-called experts, the people working at the BBC, calling out the Daily Fail's illegal behaviors of pu illegally publishing Megan's private letter illegally. I'm not seeing them, any single one of them, calling out the daily fails practices of harassing a mixed race woman, Megan, who was never on trial. I have never seen that from them. What I have seen for, from the BBC is them making shows depicting the common racist trope narratives of an angry black woman threatening to knife the future white queen of England, Kate Middleton. That's what I've seen from them. Those are the standards of reporting you expect in the UK. Very, very low, low and low standards. No wonder Prince Harry called them pirates with press cards because indeed, they are. None of them, not the people working at the BBC, especially not the people working for UK tabloids, should ever stand in front of a room and call themselves a journalist, a great artist. Stormzy once said this. A UK artist in Stormzy said this. Imagine paying for your child primary school education secondary school education all the way up to college and then after he or she leaves college they get a job working for the daily mail how embarrassing how embarrassing and how humiliating and a waste of money those are the standards that have been placed for people working for uk tablets extremely bottom of the barrel low standards very very low standards and i'm sick and tired of this uk tabloids the bbc writing malicious lies towards megan that is of sussex every single opportunity it gets this is what they all every single time this is what they do I'm so sick and tired of that. Not because I'm a fan of Prince Harry and Meghan. No. No. It's because I'm a human being. Because 
I am a human being. That's why a human being that has feelings and Megan also is a human being who has feelings. Even though UK tablets have dehumanized Megan to the point of not seeing Megan as a human being due to the fact that she is mixed race. Despite all that, I'm a human being and I've seen what Megan has experienced. UK tabloids don't see Megan as a human being. And this is why they continue to do what they have done. Behave in impunity. It needs to stop. And I'm so sick and tired to see what Megan has gone through. And it really hurts. It really hurts to see what she has gone through. Because I am a human being. And it's racism. Every single thing that they have done to Megan up to now, all lies has roots to racism. All because a mixed race woman fell in love with a white prince of the UK and the white prince of the UK couldn't stand seeing his wife and a child being abused every single day for the amusement of UK tabloids vilifying her day and night inciting hate towards Megan day and night every single day in morning talk shows every single day doing all of that causing so much pain and harm to Prince Harry and Megan I am a human being I have seen that and that's one of the reasons why I opened this channel because of the injustice I wouldn't be here if I didn't see the constant incitement of hate and targeted harassment of a woman who openly went on national TV and said that she had suicidal thoughts. I wouldn't be here right now. And so we need to stand together. We need to work together to fight what Megan has had to experience at the hands of UK tabloids and the very much racist royal family. Forget what William said that the royal family is a very much not a racist royal family. In reality, they are and they cannot hide it. Her husband, Prince Harry, is practically has to go to court and ask for a judicial review over a decision not to award, not to grant his family protection, armed security. A family whom UK tabloids have targeted profited from inciting hate towards them. All because a white prince of the UK fell in love with a mixed race black woman. So what did they do? They targeted her. We see those same racist tropes with Vice President Kamala Harris. Currently, the Vice President of the United States of America. We see that. There are even talks of replacing the Vice President of the United States of America, Kamala Harris, a mixed race woman talks of replacing her with a white woman. This has always been the goal of UK tabloids for Harry to abandon his mixed race wife to marry a white woman. This has always been the goal. We've heard that from Piers Morgan. We've heard that from the so-called carnival of so-called experts. A few weeks ago, a few days ago actually, Megan was racially abused a few days ago on Kate's birthday. For us to notice, it was Kate's birthday, Megan had to be racially abused by a so-called carnival of so-called experts, the ex-lover of Boris Johnson. And they all do this. A coordinated incitement of hate campaign towards Megan that is of Sussex. The BBC is in on it. UK tablets are in on it. Every time, whenever there is news about Prince Andrew, Notice the silence of the so-called royal rotter and notice the time when they have to make up a story about Megan and notice every single time where each and every single tabloid will carry that story immediately. But when it comes to the likes of Andrew, who represents the true values of the UK monarchy, the true values, if you look at Prince Andrew, he represents what the royal family 
stand for. He is the perfect definition of what the royal family chooses to protect. The problem with UK tablets, or one of the problems that I have and that I have noticed, that I have seen with my own two eyes, and I have seen that people even talking about it on Twitter, is the fact that UK tabloids like putting Prince Andrew and Prince Harry in the same breath. One person has been accused of being an alleged pedophile, sleeping with underage girls, a friend of Jeffrey Epstein, and one, a former veteran, serving the UK for 10 years, served two tours in Afghanistan for simply marrying a mixed-race woman. He has been put in the same breath as a person accused of sleeping with an underage girl who can't even deny it and use it as a defense in court. Yes, Prince Andrew, and it's wrong. It's wrong. I'm so sick and tired of having to see this. I am so sick and tired. I just had to express and vent my feelings personally. Because this is wrong. Uh, how is it, people who live in the UK, please tell me. How is it are your UK tablets allowed to operate in this manner? How? Please just tell me. I'm someone who's concerned. How are you allowed to constantly harass one woman day in, day out? How? Please somebody explain to me how. All because a white prince of the UK fell in love with a mixed race black woman and refused to watch his wife become the sacrificial sacrifice for the UK royal family. Because apparently a blood sacrifice is required for the royal family to continue its rule in the UK. Look at what happened to Princess Diana. A woman who never did anything wrong whatsoever. A woman who followed the rules I was asked of her to do. And Prince Charles cheated on her every single time saying that he isn't going to be the only king without a lover. And now Prince Charles, a lousy husband, has also become a lousy father. A son has to go and ask a court for protection for his wife and child. Prince Charles is saying that Harry and Meghan can come and stay with him in Clarence's house if they are to visit. I want you to ask you a simple question. Is that Prince Charles lending his hand to Meghan and Harry or is he spitting on their hand of his own son and daughter-in-law, Megan. Because to me, that's not an open embrace of Megan and Harry. We, we know the leaks at the palace. Why would Harry and Megan come and live in Clarence's house with Prince Charles? Why? Because Prince Charles was feeling the heat. The PR was going badly for Prince Charles after they released the report that Prince Harry had requested a review last year at a convenient time when Prince Andrew is facing this sexual assault trial. His case goes to trial. In such a convenient time, they released a report that Harry filed last year on September. They released it now to defame Prince Harry. And say bad things about him to cover for Prince Andrew. Which is what they've done. They've been doing this for such a long time. Using Harry and Meghan as the scapegoats. Because to UK tabloids. Marrying a mixed race woman. And refusing to watch her suffer. Every single day. Is more of a crime. Than being an actual. Nonce. And I don't like the fact that they've. Actually put. Prince Harry and Prince Andrew at the same breath. They are not. Prince Andrew has been accused of sleeping with underage girls. Prince Harry simply fell in love with a mixed race woman whom UK tabloids bullied day in, day out to protect Prince Andrew. And they failed. 
and they continue to try and use Prince Harry and Meghan as scapegoats. We will not stand for that. We will not stand for that. We are sick and tired of it. So, the case and the story was the Duchess Meghan had actually apologized for failing to remember email exchanges with her former communication secretary in which they discussed briefing Omid Scobie and Carlin Duran, authors of Harry and Meghan's biography Finding Freedom. Now, Rajan, who worked for the BBC, said on the podcast, initially, Meghan Markle had said she had helped Scobie with the book. She apologized for misleading the court on this. End of quote. Now, a clarification issued by the BBC today said, the Duchess of Sussex had asked us to clarify that she apologized to the court for not remembering email exchanges with her former communication secretary, Jason Nov, in her evidence and said that she had no intention to mislead the court. What Megan said to the court was accepted by judges in the court, but the BBC with its constant never-ending racism towards Megan, had to come up with another lie. Then, after publishing the lie and airing the lie, then now they apologize for lying about Megan and issue a clarification on what Megan actually said in court. I'm sick and tired of this. I'm sick and tired of this. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Last month, the Court of Appeal upheld the decision by a high court judge that Megan had a reasonable expectation of privacy after the mail on Sunday published the contents of a letter she wrote to Thomas Markle. The mail on Sunday has since accepted defeat and will not seek to appeal the decision at the Supreme Court. So, as you can see, as you can see, with your own two eyes, each and every single one of you, he was eyes, let him see. Every single time, these UK tablets lie on Megan, then issue a clarification saying we are sorry about what we initially said. We are very sorry. They don't mean it. They don't mean what they said. The main goal is to continue this targeted harassment of this woman, Megan, and it has to stop. This vilification campaign, harassment campaign towards Megan has to stop. And it needs to stop now. It needs to stop now. We are not going to stand for it. We are not going to stand for it. We are not going to stand for it. Make no mistake about that. Make no mistake whatsoever about that. Now, I ask you to support this channel, people. I ask you to support this channel. Kindly like subscribe and support our ever-growing family on youtube hit that subscribe button to support our ever-growing family on youtube like our videos and leave a comment below to support our channel we have to fight this constant targeted harassment towards megan falling in love while black is not a crime falling in love while black mixed race is not a crime it is not a crime it needs to stop it needs to stop it needs to stop. And that's how I will end my podcast today. Stay tuned to our next video. God is good. And thank you so, so much. And so today I want to talk about the statement or the comment that Harry made in an interview with Tom Bradby years ago. Prince Harry said this, whatever he and Megan do. They will do together as a team. That's what Prince Harry said. And the reason I'm saying this is I've had some comment that oh, they're going to split up. The biggest desire, the biggest desire from the carnival of so-called experts, this comment, by the way, has been made by a carnival of so-called experts. I'm not going to mention the name. I've had it today, and I just wanted to address it. The biggest desire of the British carnival of so-called experts and the UK tabloids, the firm, 
is for Harry to abandon his wife and children and come back to following Prince William around to be Prince William's and Prince Charles' personal scapegoat to smile for the camera alongside them and if Prince William continues to cheat allegedly cheat on his wife with Rose Hanbury Prince Harry to take the fall for him through you know the normal coming up with a new story to distract from what Prince William has done or even the latest Prince Charles CBE cash for access scandal and listen why would Harry abandon his wife and child to come back to the UK that's never ever going to happen that's never ever going to happen the UK tabloids carnival of so-called experts have never been able to come to terms with the fact that Prince Harry will always choose his wife and children. He's done that time and time again. But clearly, the memo has never arrived in their heads. They still are struggling, struggling, deeply, deeply struggling with the thought of Prince Harry having and enjoying his happily ever after far, far away from the firm and the UK tablets, they will never ever be able to accept it. Never. And you know what? It does not matter. It doesn't matter if they'll be able to accept it or not. One thing is for sure that I can tell them this for free. They don't need to pay me to tell them this. After what you did to Prince Harry's mother, you harassed her to the point she lost her life. And then, instead of learning your lesson, because you simply paid a bunch of compensation, you felt like, ah, we can do this again and get away with it. So what did you do? Prince Harry, the man whose mother you took at such a young age, fell in love with a mixed race woman. You could not stand seeing him smiling, seeing him so, so happy with a mixed race woman. So much so that you tried to take away that smile. By doing what? By harassing his wife? By bullying his wife? By slandering his wife? To the point that his wife had suicidal thoughts and wanted to take her own life while she was still pregnant with baby Archie because of the pain that she was feeling and the tremendous distress that UK tabloids were causing Meghan Duchess of Sussex they couldn't stand to see her happy they will never be able to stand knowing that stand knowing that Megan is having and enjoying a happily ever after. They prefer them taking the abuse back in the UK. They prefer seeing Megan almost in tears because that, that grants them, grants them so-called satisfaction to cause pain to a mixed race woman. Listen and listen very, very clearly. Prince Harry has made it specifically clear that whatever he and Meghan do, they will do together as a team. Together, keyword, together as a team. This ongoing obsession of the British tabloids with trying to separate Prince Harry and Meghan is not going to work. You've done that already for five years. Five years now. Five years since their relationship became public. Five years now. You've done that and you've never ever stopped since then. But still, look at them. They continue thriving. They now finally have a smile 
on their faces after everything they went through in the UK. Harry has an amazing, amazing daughter, Lilibet Diana. He has an amazing son whom he is proud to call his son. His book, his own personal books, has seen in his trip into New York is engraved with the name Archie's Papa. Those are words. That's, that's a proud father. A man proud to being, of being a father. This is a man who will protect his wife and children from the likes of the carnival of so-called experts and the firm, members of the firm. He will protect them from his own, from a person who calls himself his brother. Prince William, who's caused them tremendous pain, harm, and suffering by doing things such as authorizing Jason North to give information to British tablets against Megan so as to harm Megan and cause her pain. It backfired on Prince William. It completely, completely backfired. Megan won her case. She'll make millions and millions in compensation for breach of copyright and privacy against the daily fail. And these people think that Megan should have let others in the royal family take credit for her work, bully her at the same time while doing it, because they've been there for a long, longer time. That the abuse was a rite of passage into the UK monarchy. And that she shouldn't have done a better job than others because it makes them look bad. How is it Megan's fault that the likes of Prince William go on vacations every week? Are too lazy to work? How is that Megan's fault? These people will be blaming Megan for eating an avocado, closing her own cardo, rather than face the fact that they have lazy royals that they look up to, the carnival of so-called experts. They basically can't even prop up Prince William. They can't prop up Prince William without trying to diminish Harry and Megan, without even putting Megan's name next to it, or even Harry's name. Because nobody cares about the likes of Prince William or Kay Milton. Nobody cares. And they need to come to terms with the fact that Harry is not coming back. He's never ever coming back to that farm. Ever, ever again. Never after what you did to his family, his wife and children. And that's why today I want to say thank you. Thank you so much this farm for rejecting for rejecting Harry and Meghan's half-in, half-out proposal. You did them a fantastic favor. And make no mistake, that's the only thing I will ever thank you for. Harry and Meghan are now thriving, working to put food on their table, are not, and while the rest of the royal family are leeching on taxpayer money. The royal family has made more money during the pandemic, doing Zoom calls, than any other time, any other moment or period in history, in history, doing, doing Zoom calls to the royal family is very, very expensive. Very expensive. And for the money that they get paid, I do a thousand Zoom calls in a day. And first of all, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for liking, subscribing. I just had to set the record straight because something bothered me today this is what bothered me today and i'm just what relieves me and makes me happy is seeing that smile on megan's face is seeing that smile on harry's face that brings me great delight and joy knowing that they're happy far away from these people in the uk tabloids Breaking news, breaking news, I repeat, breaking news from Prince Harry's and Meghan's foundation, Archwell, spokesperson for Archwell, and this is the breaking news.
Now, in light of the ongoing controversy surrounding Spotify's continued support of Joe Rogan, whose podcast has spread proven misinformation about COVID-19 and vaccine efficacy, a spokesperson for Archwell, Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan's foundation says this, and I quote, Listen up. Since the inception of Archwell, we have worked to address the real-time global misinformation crisis. Hundreds of millions of people are affected by the serious harms of rampant mis- and disinformation every single day. Last April, our co-founders began expressing concerns to our partners at Spotify about the all too real consequences of COVID-19 misinformation on its platform. We have continued to express our concerns to Spotify to ensure changes to its platform are made to help address this public health crisis. We look forward to meet this moment and are committed to continuing our work together as it does. Now that is a statement from Prince Harry and Meghan's spokesperson at Archwell. And I love Prince Harry. I love Prince Harry and Meghan for every single thing that they do. I mean, I'm grateful to them for this talking to Spotify about this. I'm grateful. Now, but Prince Harry, this is not the first time that he's made these comments. Prince Harry made these comments a long, long time ago, back in May 2021, where he talked about Joe Rogan over his vaccination remarks back in May 2021. And this is what he said, and I quote, You've got to be careful about what comes out of your mouth. End of quote. That's what Prince Harry said when during an interview with Dax Shepard. Now, who also has a podcast at Spotify. Now, Prince Harry said this long, long ago. And Prince Harry has joined the chorus of backlash against Joe Rogan's remarks about the coronavirus vaccine, arguing that the influential podcast star should have chosen his words more carefully a while back ago in May 2021. Now, Prince Harry, who appeared on Dark Shepherd and Monica Padman's Armchair Expert podcast a few weeks, months ago, back in May 2021, said this. The Duke of Sussex said, and I quote, The issue is in today's world with misinformation endemic. You've got to be careful about what comes out of your mouth. It follows Joe Rogan telling his the Joe Rogan Experience listeners on Spotify, and I quote, If you are like 21 years old and you say to me, should I get vaccinated? I'll go, no. If you're a healthy person and you're exercising all the time and you're young and you're eating well, I don't think you need to worry about this, end of quote. That's what Joe Rogan was telling his listeners on his podcast in Spotify, The Joe Rogan Experience. Now, Joe Rogan is a matter is a man who has a huge huge platform on Spotify. He averages a monthly or even per podcast listeners of 11 million viewers in every single podcast, 11 million listeners for every single podcast at Spotify. And listen, how many people have lost their lives due to the COVID-19? pandemic that we are currently having right now it hasn't ended even up to now many many people have lost their lives as a result of this pandemic and we need to be careful with our words careful with what comes out of your mouth as prince harry said months ago back in may 2021 has he told Joe Rogan, we need to be careful about what comes out of our mouths especially someone who has such a large platform why is it that people who have large platforms chooses to use their platforms to spread misinformation and disinformation on covid-19 it's just wrong it's just wrong and it's a huge disappoint disappointment for people like joe rogan to 
spread misinformation and disinformation on COVID-19. For what? For what? For views, for listeners, to average 11 million listeners in every single podcast. It's just wrong. There's a human cost to this level of lies. There's a huge, huge human cost. Many people have lost their lives as a result of this pandemic. Many, many, many people, hundreds of thousands of people have lost their lives due to this pandemic, COVID-19. And people who have huge platforms like Joe Rogan should stop spreading misinformation and disinformation. Now, in light of everything that has happened, Rogan said this, and I quote, I said, I believe the vaccines are safe and I encourage many people to take them. My parents were vaccinated, I just said. I don't think that if you are a young, healthy person, that you need it. Now think about this. Your parent has a pre-existing condition. You are a young person, right? You go out there, you listen to someone like Joe Rogan, who tells you not to use the vaccine because you are healthy, you are young, and then by chance you get infected and you go ahead to your home and you infect your parents and then you lose your parents because of what Joe Rogan said. How would you feel? How would you feel? You'd feel terrible, right? You'd feel absolutely terrible. And that's why we have to stop this pandemic, the pandemic of, of misinformation, disinformation. It's a global pandemic. We have to stop this. We have to fight it. We have to stop this. Many people have lost their lives. And people who have a global platform like Joe Rogan should stop this, should stop this misinformation and disinformation. And I'm glad that Prince Harry is speaking up against this global crisis of misinformation and disinformation from Spotify's Joe Rogan. And I'm glad that many people have stood up to it. Right? I'm glad. Now, as Prince Harry said, that it would have been better for Rogan to stay out of it and that with a platform comes responsibility. And then actor Doug Shepherd at the time back in May 2021, as I have said, added that Rogan's comments were ridiculous and wrong, but suggested that he is entitled to his opinion. Yes, we are all entitled to our opinion. Every single one of us. Free speech. We are all entitled to having free speech. Every single one of us is entitled to free speech. But do not when your free speech is used to defame others, is used to slander others, is used to spread misinformation and disinformation. It's just wrong. Very, very wrong. Especially to those who have a huge platform like Joe Rogan. Now, Prince Harry's intervention is notable given that he and Rogan are stablemates at Spotify where they both have exclusive deals. Now, Armchair Expert also went exclusive with Spotify months ago. Dark Shepherd Spotify podcast called The Armchair Expert. Now, Prince Harry appeared on the Armchair Expert to promote his Apple TV Plus series with Oprah Winfrey, The Me You Can't See, which premiered on May, back in May. So thank you. Thank you to Prince Harry for this statement that you've issued addressing this global misinformation campaign that we have on the COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. And Prince Harry has been lauded for speaking out against this misinformation crisis that we currently have. Now, some Twitter users called and uploaded Prince Harry for issuing a statement about this. One called S. Bonnet said this, They are right. Rogan isn't the only one. Actually, this witch hunt against one podcast is taking the focus off the wider problem that spreads all over the internet and social media platforms. Outlets need to take responsibility but not justify Spotify and the problem 
isn't just Joe Rogan. I agree 100% as Bonnet. I agree with you 100%. The problem isn't just Joe Rogan's experience. It's also the likes of Fox News peddling misinformation about COVID-19. It's also about UK tablets constantly spreading misinformation and disinformation about the vaccine. The right-wing tablets owned by Rupert Murdoch and the likes of UK's Daily Mail owner Jonathan Rothmere. It's completely wrong what they've been able to successfully get away with. It's very, very, very wrong. No single person like Rupert Murdoch or Jonathan Rothmere has ever caused more pain and harm to this world with this misinformation crisis that we have and peddling anti-vaccine mandates to people. Language that they've used in their Fox News, in this UK tabloids, The Sun, The Daily Fail, this anti-vaccine thing that they've been peddling is just so, so wrong. It's very, very wrong. And this is what I keep on saying. Some of the biggest noise against Spotify is on Facebook, which is also where I've come across some of the worst misinformation about COVID. And someone called Bo said this, I agree, Rogan isn't the only one to be spreading misinformation. Neither will he be the last. If someone like Rogan is on Apple Music, will everyone just boycott Apple Music too? It's platforms that need to balance countering misinformation and not complete censorship. I completely agree with that. 100% Bo. I mean, we have platforms like, like social media sites that basically peddle anti-Megan, anti-Harry content. We've seen that on YouTube. We've seen that on Twitter. We've seen that on Facebook. These hate accounts being allowed to profit make up to $3.5 million spreading anti-hate content about Megan. We've seen that. And the fact that they are they have not removed their content speaks speaks so so much. It speaks speaks a lot. Allow me to just go ahead to one thing that I recently saw in the Christopher Bowsey Board Sentinel report. I actually post it here. I'll post it right now. Now this is what happened. Now according to the investigation. Hate accounts were found to be soliciting actually were found to be soliciting information about Megan illegally. Soliciting sensitive information, which is illegal. Now, soliciting sensitive information about Harry and Megan was a red line that these hate accounts had no problem crossing. People would respond with the requested information with no concern. For the couple's safety, for Prince Harry, Meghan, Archie, or Little Bit Diana's safety. Often, the posted information would include unredacted mailing addresses and other information that someone could use to target Prince Harry and Meghan. The reckless solicitation of information was brazen and done out in the open without fear of suspension or even reprisal. And something needs to be done. Okay, something needs to be done. The likes of, according to Taz, actually posted a picture of Harry and Meghan's home asking for their address, for their, where they stay. She tweeted and said this, Has anyone got the property statement on Harry and Meghan's mansion? I remember it doing the rounds and it showed the address, the company information, price, bought, etc. They've been soliciting information on Prince Harry and Meghan illegally not caring about their safety, not caring anything about their safety. And no one will ever minimize what Meghan Markle went through. We are all alive witnessing it. Every single one of us is alive witnessing it. And people, this hate account, like according to Taz, are trying to get details of Prince Harry and Meghan's home, where they live with their son Archie and little bit Diana. Yet the royal family that's been peddling and helping UK tablets peddle lies about Harry and Meghan have been getting away with it. And it makes me sick. It makes me, it makes me sick what they've done to Prince Harry and Meghan. Yet when Prince Harry says, I want to come back to the UK, 
perhaps even to visit my mom's grave and put some flowers and take my kids around the UK and my wife. But without security that is armed after what UK tablets have constantly incited hate towards Prince Harry and Meghan, they need the security. But despite all of this, despite everything, still, up to now, Prince Harry has asked to pay for his own security, but the request has been rejected. They don't want to give him the right to pay for his own Met Police funded security that will be armed. They're not allowing it. And the only reason they're not allowing it is because someone from the palace has issued has spoken to home office telling him to not grant Prince Harry's request for a review to receive security. The review is currently ongoing. But things like this should never ever take time. The security of Prince Harry and Meghan is not a joke. It's not a joke that these people have been playing with. It's not a joke. And we are not going to sit here and just stand for it. Okay? I'm, go I'm not going to stand for it. We are not going to stand for it. And I'm glad for people who have gone on and talked about this. Someone called DB also, also issued a statement about this. A comment actually on Twitter. Thanking Prince Harry for calling out disinformation and mis misinformation. And DB said this. I remember Harry calling out Joe Rogan on his COVID mis and disinformation long before Neil Young had an issue with Spotify. This new statement from Archwell is very appropriate and needs no further explanation. Okay. And thank you so much. Thank you so much to every, every single person that has commented and talked about this. Those are the samples of people that have commented on the current disinformation and misinformation crisis that we have. Thank you to Prince Harry and Meghan for issuing this comment about this, this statement about this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Allow me to, to just repeat this statement that Prince Harry and Meghan have issued currently please allow me to read this for those who are currently joining the live podcast now this is the comment and the streaming the prince harry and megan through actual foundation have released and i quote since the inception of actual we have worked to address the real-time global misinformation crisis hundreds of millions of people are affected by the serious harms of rampant mis and disinformation every day last april our co-founders began expressing concerns to our partners at Spotify about the all too real consequences of COVID-19 misinformation on its platform. We have continued to express our concerns to Spotify to ensure changes to its platform are made to help address this public health crisis. We look to Spotify to meet this moment and are committed to continuing our work together as it does. I love it. I love it. I love, I love this 100%. Thank you so much, Prince Harry. Thank you so much, Megan, for speaking out against misinformation. They already spoke about it back in the past, in May 2021. And currently, they have also repeated it. So Prince Harry was already speaking about it since even long, since long ago, in May 2021. And thank you so much, Prince Harry. Thank you so much, Megan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Remember what they say to even Joe Rogan, that you have to be careful with what you say. And I agree with that 100%. 100% for that we say thank you. Now, in light of the statement that Prince Harry and Megan have released through Archwell, Today, I want to talk about Christopher Bowsey, the one who made this report of the targeted hate accounts that harass, insult, defame Megan every single time. Now, Christopher Bowsey said this. Since releasing our report 12 days ago, hate accounts have attacked journalists, 
got a TikTok cre content creator fired and went after my daughter who has nothing to do with my research. This is why I have been tweeting obsessively about this hate group since October. Thank you so much to Christopher Bowsey. Thank you so much to every single person across the world. If you are one of them who stands against hate and chooses love and fights hate like Christopher Bowsey and what we at the Sussex Squad are doing, I say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, these hate accounts have, target, have targeted Christopher Bowsey. One even sent an email to Christopher Bowsey's daughter. Imagine. Imagine. They are fighting so hard to be hateful towards Megan without any pushback whatsoever, without them being called, called out for their activities, for their racism, for their harassment of a woman who had suicidal thoughts. They're even going after Christopher Bowsey's own daughter. A daughter. Children should always be off limits. That's what the so-called Kate and Williams fans like to say. But they never cared about that when they were bullying Megan while pregnant every single day, racially abusing her. They never cared about it. And now they also go after Christopher Bowsey's daughter who has nothing to do with his both sentinel research on the hate accounts that are targeting Megan that is of Sussex. Now Christopher Bowsey said this again. What you're observing isn't a bunch of bored people trolling or, and I quote, free speech. It's targeted harassment and platform manipulation. I have said on the record, this is the worst we have witnessed and we have seen some pretty nasty attacks. These people are extremely dangerous. 100%. They are dangerous. They are very, very dangerous. Dangerous. The likes of Marky, the likes of, of according to Taz, the likes of this person who calls himself the Duke of Pantilonium or something, who sent an email out to Christopher Bowsey's daughter. These are dangerous, dangerous people. Dangerous. And that's why action needs to be taken to deplatform these people before somebody gets hurt. You have them right here, right now, tweeting, openly tweeting about Harry and Meghan's mailing address. Hate accounts tweeting. What if someone who has been taught to hate, as Lisa Mandela said, no one is taught hating another to hate someone based on the color of his skin. Hate does not come naturally. Love come naturally to the human heart. Unfortunately, this time, these people are being taught by these hate accounts to hate, to incite hate towards Megan. And it's wrong. It's wrong. What if someone chooses to act on that hate? That's why these people, they need to be deplatformed. They need to lose their platform. These hate accounts, according to Taz, Marky, and the likes of this Duke of Plantinonium, who's targeting Christopher Bowsey's daughter, they need to lose their platform before somebody gets hurt. It isn't free speech. It's targeted harassment and platform manipulation. So Christopher Bowsey said this, I have said on the record, this is the worst we have witnessed and we have seen some pretty nasty attacks. Ask yourself this question. Why are they still going after Meghan Markle? Meghan doesn't live in the UK. She no longer has any royal duties. And unless there is a catastrophic event, she will never be queen consort. So why does this group of hate accounts still focus on her? The goal has always been to harm. That has always been the goal. I've said this before and I, and I will say this again. And even Christopher Bowsey himself, who through this bot sentinel report, has actually found out what these hate accounts have been doing. Okay? And he himself is saying this. Megan doesn't live in the UK. I've said this also again. She no longer has royal duties. I've also said this in this channel. And unless there's a catastrophic event, she will never be co queen consort. So why does this, this hate group of hate accounts still focus on her? The same thing applies to the so-called carnival of so-called experts. 
the people behind the farm who work on behalf of the farm to smear Meghan and Harry who received lies from the palace about Harry and Meghan to plaster across their front pages the likes of the Daily Mail that has constantly incited hate towards Meghan every single day from the moment her relationship to Prince Harry became public they were already literally abusing Meghan when Meghan was pregnant every single day she was being abused front, left, right and center every single day morning talk shows were dedicated to inciting hate towards a woman whom some even some carnival of so-called experts have even gone and said I have never met Meghan but still yet they incited hate towards Meghan they insulted her they were all too happy being given free reign to incite hate towards Meghan Okay, and Meghan, even despite leaving the UK, despite her leaving the UK, she no longer lives in the UK. Not anymore after what the whole family did to her. But still, these hate accounts have this sort of obsession that they, it's clear what they want to harm. The main intention is to harm and they need to get the platform for what they have done. Why? So what Christopher Bowsey said, why are they still publishing videos about her weekly? What exactly are they trying to accomplish? I believe they are trying to destroy Meghan Markle and anyone who tries to defend her or is even associated with her. They, I just don't like her excuse, doesn't hold water. Okay? Listen, for instance, for me personally, I don't like Republicans, but I haven't started hate accounts against Republicans, right? I've not started a hate account against Republicans. I don't like Prince William and Kate Middleton for what they did to Meghan and Harry. I don't like them. But I haven't started a hate account dedicated to inciting hate towards Prince William and Kate Middleton. I've opened an account to support the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and also promote their work and call out the injustices that are keep happening to them call out the wrongs and the evils that keep on happening to them. That's what I have done. And even Christopher Bowsey said this, I don't like a few people, but I wouldn't dedicate four years of my life tweeting thousands of times about those people and creating hundreds of YouTube videos talking about those people. This obsession goes way beyond just not liking someone. It's pathological and disturbing. And I agree one thousand percent i agree i agree one thousand percent there are people that we don't like in our lives but i haven't formed a, an account to incite hate 24 hours a day against kate milton and prince william i have not formed an account to incite hate towards republicans okay i've not done that i haven't so why why is it that you have people here who are allowed to incite hate towards others and making a huge, huge profit. They have an incentive to continue doing it because they make hundreds of thousands of dollars doing it. And it's just wrong. As even Christopher Bowsey said, urging your viewers to attack a charity website isn't free speech. Instructing people on how to live Fake Amazon reviews isn't free speech. Buying fake Twitter accounts to manipulate conversations on Twitter isn't free speech. Telling lies on YouTube for YouTube views isn't free speech. 1000% as Christopher Bowsey said. And I've said this before. We saw what hate accounts did when Megan published her book, The Bench. Our children's book. Our children's book. Our children's book portraying the love that he has, she has for Archie and Prince Harry, the bond between Prince Harry and Archie. And still hate accounts went after Megan for it. They went after her, threatening a children's book, a children's book, a children's book. They went after it, leaving fake Amazon reviews to the point that Amazon had to restrict reviews to only those that have bought the book. That's how bad it was. Yes, that's how bad it was. 
And this is what UK tabloids have done to Megan. This is what the farm has done to Megan. This is what these hate accounts have done to Megan. The constant incitement of hate, and yet the royal family, the farm, calls home office to tell them not to allow Prince Harry to pay for his own security. They first they strip a person who inherited risks of security. Then after that, he says, he goes out, go, gets a job and says, I want to pay for my security. And they still say no. The only reason they would say no to a person's request to fund his own security is because they wish to harm that person. And we are not going to stand for it. We are not going to stand for it. We are not going to tolerate it. Buying fake Twitter accounts to manipulate conversations on Twitter is not free speech, as Christopher Bowsey has said. Telling lies for YouTube views isn't free speech. Now, Christopher Bowsey said this, What annoys me is they have the audacity to play the victim when there is nearly four years of evidence outlining their coordination, harassment, abuse, cyber-stalking, and in some cases, criminality. These people are not victims. Period. And indeed, they are not victims. The like of, according to Taz, this Duke of Pandelonium, who is actually sending emails to Christopher Bowes' daughter, to the point that a child gets scared. It's very, very wrong. It's very, very wrong. It's very, very wrong. What they've done to Megan, we have evidence of their harassment. We have their emails. Of them asking for Megan's address. Hate accounts asking for Megan's address in California. She no longer lives in the UK. They made sure her living in the UK is untenable. The royal family, the farm, the UK tabloids, the Daily Mail, the Sun, owned by Rupert Murdoch and Jonathan Rothmere, they made sure that Megan's staying in the UK was untenable. She had to flee. She's already fled and went back home to California. They wrote articles telling Megan to go telling Megan to go back to America. She's now back in America. Then just leave her alone. Leave her alone. But still, they continue the harassment, again asking for Harry and Megan's mailbox address. Hate accounts asking for that. And still they still have a platform despite doing all of this. Because they know that this social media. Companies value profit. Profit farts fast. Hate for profit. We've seen it in Facebook, which now calls itself matter. We've seen it here, according to Christopher Bowsey. These three YouTube hate accounts, according to Taz, Marky, and the likes of this Duke of Pantinonium and Yankee Wally. All these people setting hate towards someone for profit. It's just wrong it's very very wrong and this has to stop this has to stop it has got to stop now today is also the queen at oprah winfrey's birthday and today i just want to take this opportunity to wish at oprah winfrey happy birthday so let's sing oprah winfrey so so much a happy birthday song happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday dear oprah happy birthday to you thank you so much to oprah winfrey for giving prince harry and megan a place where they can share their experiences on the talk show with oprah winfrey that aired back in march Thank you so, so much to Oprah for every single thing that you've done to support Prince Harry and Meghan after every single thing that they have been through. Thank you so, so much to Oprah Winfrey. May you always be blessed and continue being blessed. You and Tyler Perry as well. Tyler Perry is a good man that actually paid for Prince Harry and Meghan's security when the royal family stripped them of their security and then leaked the Daily Mail, their location, in Canada to the point that Harry and Meghan had to immediately leave Canada leave Canada before lockdown began they left Canada and went 
I started living in California. And again, the Daily Mail tracked them to California and said that they were staying there again as well. But thanks to Tyler Perry, who had given Prince Harry and Meghan security and a home to stay in. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Tyler Perry. Be blessed. Thank you. Thank you so much. An amazing, two fantastic people, Tyler Perry, Oprah Winfrey. Thank you so much for every single thing that you've done for Megan, Harry, Archie, and Lil Petan. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Now, as I end this podcast, happy birthday to Oprah Winfrey. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and supporting our ever-growing family on YouTube. Thank you so, so much. Now, we talk about we talk about the Spotify comment statement issued by Prince Harry and Meghan. Tell us what you think about it. We talk about we talk about these hate accounts. Tell us what you think about it. And happy birthday to Oprah Winfrey. With so much love from Sasquatch Family TV. Stay tuned to our next video and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for what? Why would you do that? For daily and consistent content. Now with so much love, stay tuned to our next video and don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Thank you so much. Love you family.